power, autocracy, influence, wealth. Sani Abacha had it all. He dominated and controlled all industries in Nigeria. Literally everything depended on the decision Sani Abacha gave. With a simple word, he could save or destroy anyone, any organization, agency or movement. Hated by most people, admired by very few. There will never be another political dictator in Nigeria like General Sani Abacha. This is his story. The following decisions come into immediate effect. The interim national government is hereby dissolved. Sani Abacha was born on the 20th of September 1943 into the Kanuri ethnic group. Abacha hailed from a modest background. His father, Ibrahim Abacha, was a Kanuri Muslim who worked as a police officer during the colonial era under the British rule in Nigeria. Abacha's mother, Zalwaniya, was from the Margi ethnic group. However, there is a different perspective that claims his father's name to be Kere Abacha and his mother's name to be Zinatu. Well, he had a strong will and disciplined parent who believed that formal education was necessary for their son. So therefore, after his education in Nigeria, he attended the Moon's Officer Cadet School in Aldershot, England, and the Royal College of Military Engineering in Chatham, England. Although there is no exact date to which he attended the college, but it was shortly before he was commissioned to be part of the 3rd Battalion as a lieutenant in the army in the year 1963. Abacha also pursued advanced military college in the United States Army Command and General Staff College. Further enhancing his military skills and knowledge, this also has no exact year to which he went to study in the United States. However, we can all agree that he had a successful and strong educational background, which will go on to reflect in his military career. His military career began in Kaduna in the year 1962 when he enrolled in the Nigerian Military Training College. And due to his dedication, in the year 1963, he was commissioned as a second lieutenant in the Nigerian Army. He participated in the Nigerian Counter Coup in July 1966. While still a second lieutenant in the 3rd Battalion in Kaduna, he fought in the Nigerian Civil War in the year 1969 as a battalion and platoon leader. You know, it's quite interesting that in the year 1993, he became the first Nigerian officer to attain a full general rank without skipping a single rank. He became a second lieutenant in the year 1963, a lieutenant in the year 1966, a captain in the year 1967, a major in the year 1969, a lieutenant colonel in the year 1972, a colonel in the year 1975, a brigadier general in the year 1980, a major general in the year 1984, a lieutenant general in the year 1987, and a general in the year 1990. All of this for just one person, he must have been a mind-blowing individual and of course, he was envied. Babangida and his armed force ruling council began to plan for transition to civilian rule, setting October 1990 as the date to lift the ban on political activities which had been in place since 1983 and legalize the formation of two parties, the National Republican Convention NRC, and the Social Democratic Party SDP. Babangida urged all Nigerians to join either of the parties. In the year 1987, the National Electoral Commission was established and tasked with the process of overseeing all electoral proceedings in the country. But failing to meet the stipulated deadline, the date for the return to civilian rule was changed from 1990 to 1993. On the 12th of June 1993, the National Electoral Commission led by Professor Humphrey Unwosu organized one of the freest and fairest elections in the country's history till date. It made use of a voting system called the Open Ballot, which allowed voters to vote in the open even though the turnout was low, no episode of serious violence was recorded. Two days later, the first batch of the election results were announced. Abiola won 19 of the 30 states and the Federal Capital Territory. This included all the states of the Southwest, three of the seven states in the Southeast, five of the nine Northern states, including Kano, Tofa's home state, and four out of the seven states in the Middle Belt. Cumulatively, Abiola won by 58% majority, 
becoming the first Southerner to secure the national mandate freely and fairly. Abiola's political message was clear because he had great plans for Nigerians. He believed in an optimistic future for Nigeria. As president, it's not, it's not my business what religious color anybody wears. We, we employ people purely on merit, period. One of his intentions was to manage the country's international debts while presenting himself as someone the international community can trust and count on. However, this euphoria did not last for long. On the 24th of June 1993, General Ibrahim Babangida annulled the election citing the issue of vote buying and national security concerns as reasons for annulment. It is true that the presidential election was generally seen to be free, fair and peaceful. However, there was in fact a huge array of electoral practices virtually in all the states of the federation. Ibrahim Babangida, however, appointed Enes Shoneku, a prominent corporate executive from the southwest region, as the head of the transitional council and initiates the draft for the constitution of the Third Republic. But little did Chief Enesonekon Shonekon know that he would spend just 82 days in office before being mandated to step down for the military to take over. General Sanya Bacha saw the opportunity to take over by overthrowing the interim civilian government led by Chief Enes Shonekon. Following the coup, Abacha assumed control as Nigeria's military head of state, positioning himself as the most powerful figure in the country. The final decisions come into immediate effect. The interim national government is hereby dissolved. The national and state assemblies are also dissolved. The state executive councils are dissolved. The brigade commanders are to take over from the governors in their states until administrators are appointed. Where there are no brigade commanders, the commissioners of police in the states are to take over. All local governments stand dissolved. The directors of personnel are to take over the administration of the local governments until administrators are appointed. The National Electoral Commission is hereby dissolved. Abacha's behavior was hardly seen to be democratic. Even while assuring Nigerians of democratization, he discharged a significant number of military personnel and outlawed all political activities. He had the media control, which left every civilian blind to matters arising. His government was above the jurisdiction of any court, and this gave him absolute power to detain anyone for three months without trial. And trust me, he utilized this power to the fullest. Abacha faced criticism for his human rights abuses, including the imprisonment and execution of political opponents, as well as the restriction of civil liberties and freedom of the press. It would have been unbelievable if these controversies influenced Abacha's grip on power. He is widely known as one of the most powerful and dreaded leaders in the history of Nigeria through the use of brutal force and strategic political maneuvering. In June 1995, General Sani Abacha declared a new constitution that greatly consolidated his power as the president of Nigeria. This meant that he had the authority to appoint and dismiss senior government officials, judges, and military officers. Much heat and little light has been generated on the issue of the terminal date of this administration, that it is neither in our personal interest know that of the nation to perpetuate ourselves in power. Abacha faced criticism for his human rights abuses, including the imprisonment and execution of political opponents, as well as the restriction of civil liberties and freedom of the press. One of the most unforgettable stories of Abacha's human rights violation comes from the south-south region of Nigeria. We are going to demand our rights peacefully, non-violently, and we shall win. Ken Ule Sarowewa, a writer and environmental activist, was a member of the Ogoni people, an ethnic minority in southern Nigeria. His homeland had been the destination of crude oil exploration since the 1950s. For decades, Ogoni land had suffered from extreme environmental damage due to indiscriminate deposition of petroleum waste, particularly by Shell Oil Corporation. I accuse the oil companies which prospect for oil in Ogoni of encouraging 
genocide against the Ogoni people. I accuse Shelb and Chevron of practicing racism against the Ogoni people because they do in Ogoni what they do not do in other parts of the world where they prospect for oil. In 1990, Saruwa founded the movement for the survival of the Ogoni people, MOSOP, which advocated for the rights of the Ogoni people. MOSOP argued that the operations of Shell had devastated the region's environment and the health of the people without bringing benefits to the indigenous people. In January 1993, MOSOP organized a peaceful march to voice their complaint to the government. On the 21st of May 1994, four Ogoni chiefs, all on the conservative faction within Musop, were brutally murdered. Increasing tensions in the Ogoni land, Saruiwa and eight of his compatriots were accused of playing a role in the murder of those chiefs and thus they were sentenced to death. On the 10th of November 1995, Ken Saruiwa, Sato Dobi, Nodo, Iwo, Daniel Boko, Paul Levera, Felix Noathe, Barry Bobera, Barry Nem Kyobel, and John Pini were executed. Ken Saruiwa's last words were, Lord, take my soul, but the struggle continues. I was devastated. True. I just asked, where was God? How can you let an innocent man be killed in that sort of horrible manner? Of all these harsh treatments Nigerian faced under Abacha's rule, there were some positive accolades attributed to his rule as the head of state. During his rule, the country's foreign exchange reserves increased from $49 million in 1993 to $9.6 billion by the middle of 1997. His regime also significantly lowered Manchuria's external debts, which stood at $36 billion in 1993, but was only $27 billion by 1997. Despite his controversial domestic actions, Abacha engaged in diplomatic activities at the international level in order to maintain Nigeria's relations with other countries and regional bodies. As unbelievable as it would seem about someone who had that level of power and authority, a practical dictator who owned everything in Nigeria, General Sanya Abacha's tenure as Nigeria's 10th military ruler came to an abrupt end when he suddenly passed on. On the 8th of June 1998, he died under mysterious circumstances with conflicting reports surrounding the cause of his death. While some reports suggested that he died of an heart attack, others alleged foul play within his inner circle, which resulted in him being poisoned. Abacha's death marked the end of a dreadful chapter in Nigeria's history, but his legacy continues to be debated, with some remembering him as a complex figure who was a strong leader that stabilized the country to a particular extent. Others condemned his autocratic rule and human rights abuses. His military experience, rise to power, and authoritarian rule has left a lasting impact on the country and either he is remembered as a hero or a villain. General Abacha's impact on Nigeria cannot be denied. Following General Sanya Abacha's death on the 8th of June 1998, Nigeria entered a period of transition marked by political uncertainty. Here are some of the events that unfolded after Abacha's demise. Chief MKO Abiola, the presidential candidate who was set to win the 1993 presidential election died on the 7th of July 1998, the day he was due to be released from prison. In response to the news of Abiola's death, widespread riots broke out in most western cities across Nigeria, particularly in Ogun State, Abiola's home state. I'm, I'm surprised and I'm shocked and it's still unbelievable. Yeah. I can't believe it. I can't believe that type of story. Yes. That he have cough. Yes. Heart attack. Yes. Cardiac arrest. Yes. Can't be out. I can't believe it. And on the 20th of July 1998, the new head of state general Abdusalami Abubakar unveiled his political transition program and declared May 29th, 1999 as the handover date to civilian rule, which brought about the presidential leadership of Ulushegun Obasanjo. 
Shagun Obasanjo. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will be faithful. That I will be faithful. And bear true allegiance. And bear true allegiance. To the Federal Republic of Nigeria. To the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And that I will preserve. And that I will preserve. Protect. Protect and defend and defend the constitution the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you for sticking to the end. I really do appreciate you and I will see you on the next video. Cheers.